Pakistan is hitting back in this war of words. One of the country's most prominent politicians is the opposition leader, Imran Khan. I spoke with him a short time ago. I began by asking him for his reaction to Donald Trump's tough talk. Um, well, Hala, it's something uh, every Pakistani feels hurt, humiliated. Uh, it's, uh, you know, a country that has uh, that collaborated with the U.S. after 9-11. And by joining the U.S. in the U.S. war on terror, we ended up losing something like 70,000 people dead, over $100 billion lost to the economy. And the tribal areas, which is adjoining the uh, mm -hmm. Afghanistan, were a population of 6 million, almost uh, at one point, 80% were uh, homeless IDPs. So after all this, suddenly to hear uh, this uh, strange statement that Pakistan is responsible, made a scapegoat for the US not succeeding in Afghanistan, it is, uh, I, I, I just have to say that it is deeply uh, painful for all of us. So you don't acknowledge that Pakistan is turning a blind eye sometimes, the government itself. I spoke to Zalmay Khalilzad, uh, the former uh, American ambassador to Afghanistan. He said it's not true. The government knows where these extremist groups are. This is what he said, that essentially they're not just in these tribal zones, but in the big cities themselves, if you could listen. In fact, uh, the leadership of the Taliban are in the city of Quetta, uh, uh, other leaders are in uh, places like Peshawar, big cities of Pakistan. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, of course, when they come across the border, they cross uh, areas that are tribal. But uh, the government of Pakistan knows where these people are. So you have former ambassadors like Khalilzad saying the government knows exactly where these people are and they're just turning a blind eye. So number one, why does he not tell this to the Pakistani government or the military, which keeps asking them to tell them where these people are? Because they seem to know, Zalmay Khalil Zad seems to know. Number two, uh, uh, Hala, is this plausible? That in, uh, there were 150,000 NATO troops in Afghanistan, over 100,000 American troops, one of the mightiest military machine in the history of mankind. And the total number of insurgents going into Afghanistan, which Pakistan is being accused of harboring, it, it, the Haqqani group, that's the group, yeah. Haqqani network, which Pakistan is supposed to be protecting, what, they are 1,500, 2,000, maximum 3,000? Are we to believe that it's because of these 3,000 people, 150,000 of the best uh, military might of the West could not win in Afghanistan? Is this plausible? Mm -hmm. I mean, who believes this joke? So what is there in the end? Is this what they've got? They blame Pakistan for not being able to succeed well, in Afghanistan? Well, Donald Trump has even said, has even implied in his speech that aid, that assistance, economic and military to your country, Pakistan, could be at risk, he implied, unless the government of your country does more to tackle these extremists. In my opinion, Pakistan has been the biggest collateral damage in this Afghan adventure. It was ill thought out. There was no definite aims. They still, they never tried a proper political solution in Afghanistan. There was bombings and killings. And uh, to blame Pakistan at the end, who is the biggest sufferer of this war? I, uh, which country has lost 70,000 people going in uh, to, uh, uh, to help the Americans in Afghanistan? And, and, and when they talk about loss to the economy, it's over $100 billion. I mean, the, the government has come okay up with But you'd be okay with some of this so, U.S. aid being suspended if, in fact, Donald Trump goes down that road. You'd be okay with that? I would certainly recommend it to our government. I'm in the opposition. I would recommend that we could do without this aid. We are much better off staying out of Afghanistan. It, this, this aid has been very costly to us in terms of, as I said, not just the loss to the economy, but the number of Pakistanis killed, wounded, uh, lost limbs in these bomb attacks. 
uh, we, we are well, we would do without this aid. Do you do admit, though, that your country has a terrible problem with some of these groups that carry out horrific attacks? Just a few months ago in Lahore, 80 people killed in a single attack. If you were prime minister, if you were the head of the government, what would you do differently? In my opinion, Pakistan, uh, the, all the political parties have come to the table and we have come up with what is called the National Action Plan, mm -hmm. where we feel that all militant groups within Pakistan should be disarmed. So this is a consensus reached in Pakistan after all this bloodshed. And that's really the way uh, of going about it because the legacy of the 80s has to be brought to an end. And we, the only people, uh, the only force people, uh, only the government should have monopoly of arms. One last thing, a message to Donald Trump. I mean, you heard what he had to say about your country. You heard what he had to say about his strategy for Afghanistan, your neighbor. What would you tell him? What would your advice be? I, I would say that this is a deeply flawed policy. It's more of the same. If he's going to send more troops, uh, what are these troops going to do, which 150,000 NATO troops could not do? Uh, and I feel that this, uh, his stated policy of killing the enemy, I mean, that's what they've been doing for all this while. I think they should change policy. They should engage the neighbors. That means China, Russia, and Iran. And, and, and they should try and form a government of consensus. And actually, the U.S. should think of leaving Afghanistan. Because as long as there are troops in Afghanistan, there will, there's always going to be a problem. If they can do it simultaneously, get the neighbors on the same table, bring them on the, uh, a dialogue with the Taliban, and then have a withdrawal, and at the same time, a government of consensus is uh, set up in Afghanistan. To me, this is the only solution. Do you see yourself as having a clearer path to becoming prime minister? Uh, I know you're in the opposition now, but Nawaz Sharif was removed a few weeks ago. How do you see the next few months playing out for you in terms of that ambition? Well, I'm, uh, you know, a sportsman. Uh, my training is as a sportsman, so I'm always optimistic. I always think I'm going to win. Uh, and I do feel this time that this is, uh, this is our time, this coming election. Whenever it is, uh, we think it'll be the end of this winter. And I think we have a very good chance of winning the elections. You see yourself as Prime Minister of Pakistan? Well, if we win the elections, hopefully.